Hey guys, so in this video we are going to talk about SPA or single page applications versus standard server side rendered applications. So let's get into it. Now, if you've watched any of my videos about, you know, when do you use React, when don't you use React, and some of these talks, this may come, it may not come as much of a shock to you, but to all you fanboys out there for like Ember and Angular and React and so forth, I urge you stop being a SPA fanboy. Because the thing is that <clears throat> I think that we have gotten to a point today where we have gone basically it's it, we, we've caused a full circle of the same type of problem we had with jQuery and just to give you a brief history lesson for those of you out there that don't actually know this it used to be the case where when jQuery was introduced like 10, 10 years ago roughly well, not 10 years, but anywho, way back in the day when JavaScript was actually in such a so sorry state altogether that you needed something to like jQuery in order to basically do much a lot of the DOM manipulations we can today do through the native, native APIs. The problem was that jQuery became such a default tool because it was providing such immense value or the perceived value was very high that people actually started mistaking jQuery for JavaScript. They, you could, they couldn't make the distinction. They didn't understand what part was JavaScript and what was actually jQuery. And today, some people are still using jQuery, even though it's basically become pointless at this time. Like there is really no reason for you to use jQuery at all anymore in the browser. The APIs have caught up, but people are still using it as a default. They're just keep, they're still doing it. And the reason why they're doing it is for the same reason they're using React for everything, or Ember, or Angular, or Aurelia, or Vue, or whatever they're using. They use it as a default because they don't understand when it makes sense to use it versus when you shouldn't be using it. And this is, of course, a highly subjective term, but let me just walk you through my thought process on this. There was a time when you didn't have JavaScript. Yeah, I swear. I know it sounds odd, right? But there was actually a time when you didn't have JavaScript. And you simply used things such as styles, or CSF, if you will, with HTML in order to render web pages. And that was the whole story. That's all you used in order to actually provide this type of web content. And somewhere along the line, it's not, let's call it five, six, maybe seven years tops, where this idea of having all client-side applications build, like all JavaScript built clients, clients basically, this, where this idea got popularized. Before that, you actually used server-side render technology, and JavaScript was a supplement to that technology. And the thing is that for some reason, especially, I see this a lot, today, and especially a little bit of the younger developers out there, for some reason, they've done made the same mistake as I think that happened with jQuery, where the industry is popularizing and promoting SBAs to the point where people start to think that that's the only way to do things, and that's the way that they should do things, and that's the way it should be. And for people without the experience, they actually start using it as a default. It's like, you know, it's basically where today in school we have kids who will solve every single math problem using a calculator. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that you can use bigger numbers. The bad thing is that you actually lose basic arithmetic knowledge and you, you, you kind of handicap yourself and you lose understanding of mathematics, in, I, I would argue, to a certain degree. And it's the same thing with SBAs and server-side render technology. Now, this is my argument to you. I argue that the problem that an SBA solves, which is in any meaningful way, is the is it, to, it is to it is designed to give you the ability to create an, an experience for the user that feels native or native-ish. Basically, you have if you have something like my favorite example is a mail client like Google Mail or something like that, where 
you don't want to send the user to different pages. You want them to remain on the exact same page at all times and you want them basically to have a dashboard or a native application, something of that nature. Something that gives the user the sensation that they're not going between pages, they're just on the same page all the time and the content is switching accordingly. That's what an SBA does well. That's what it's designed to do, in my opinion. And somewhere along the way, somebody had the idea that, you know, well, if we can do that, well, like if we can do this content switching, like why not do all routing and all of our pages as an SBA? And that's where I think we made a mistake. I think that the world made, like we all made, the entire industry has made a mistake there. Because I believe that although SBAs are powerful for that, for the, for, for the, this intended use case, I think that they bring a lot of complexity with it as well. Like I remember just the other day when I was making a basic form. It's just a form. It has some pre-populated fields and all it's supposed to be doing is to send a post to the server. This is done using React and Redux. Something that I could have done in less than half an hour or an hour using just the native web technology, because we're talking about submitting a form here, took a lot longer. I, we, I think I spent a day and a half on making all like all of this work using Redux and React and React Router, and like because there's all of like there's so much boilerplate code you need to put your stuff in your store, do validation on the store, hook it up with action. There's tons and tons and tons of code that you need to write in order for this simple functionality to actually work in an all JavaScript environment. And then you have state changes and you have just clear, you may remember to clear your state because that what that's not handled for you. And all of these things are, are solved and have been solved uh, like a long time ago by just using the web standard, by just using a simple server-side rendered page with the post for, uh, posted form, this would have been done in, in mere moments. And this is an example, I think, of when you have defaulted to something without understanding the intended use case. You basically used the wrong tool to solve the problem, in my personal opinion. And that's why I want you to remember that server-side rendered technology is actually very powerful and it's actually extremely useful. I would even go as far as to say that it should be the other way around. I think we've gotten our wires crossed and I think it has to do with promotion because let's remember that all these frameworks and all this popularity that these frameworks are getting is due to them being fresh, they're trendy, they're being pushed as a modern day thing. I mean, anything that gets, gets promoted is going to become you know, popular. But I think that that's where the issue actually lies. I think that we are very good at promoting tools such as React, but we're very bad at explaining to people when to actually use it. Because I don't think it's a use case, I don't think it should be the default. I honestly don't. I think that it should be the exception to the rule. Because frameworks such as React and Angular and so forth, what they do is that they introduce a lot of more complex, they introduce more complexity to your application. They give you a lot of power. And they give you the ability to scale a very big SBA-like application because that was that's what they were intended to do. It was really tricky to do this in just vanilla JavaScript and they make this easier for you and they may give you a way of structuring your application, a way to maintain a large project. We And all, I love all of these things about it. But the problem is that if you don't have that need, then you're using the wrong tool to solve your problem. And honestly, often, I find that it's much easier to simply use something like Webpack to handle the scoping of JavaScript and just vanilla JavaScript and server-side render technology because server-side is not bad at all. It's actually extremely efficient to do what it was intended to do. And in my example I, with the form, it would have been an easier choice. It would have saved the, my company a lot of time. It would have saved me a lot of time and effort. We could have just gotten stuff shipped because there was no value in using React for that use case, arguably. So here's my final thoughts on this. I would say that you should, when you, are, when you reach for React or Angular or something like that, 
you should really ask yourself the question, do I need this? What is it going to give me? Am I just picking it because it's the the popular thing or am I picking it, am I picking it because it's the right fit for my project? And a good rule of thumb is to ask yourself the question, do I need to keep the user on the same page all the time? Because if you have any type of page switching or <clears throat> you don't like my favorite example for like when server side rendered content is much better. It's like a blog or a forum or a web shop or something like that where it's a web experience. There's no need for you to keep the user on the same page. If you are making a dashboard, a panel, like some type of interface, something like that, then yes, absolutely. I think that React is a good choice because you, in, in that experience, the expected behavior from the user's perspective is to, be st is to, is to stay on the same page all the time and simply have the content being switched out for them because that's the, the, the expected behavior that they're looking for. But I don't think you should try to use React or Angular or so forth for every single thing. Like I was, as I was saying earlier, the server-side render, server -side render pages are actually, they're much simpler to work with. They are. Like the the problem has always has never been with server side rendered technology. In my opinion, it's been with JavaScript. JavaScript is this like it's <laughs> we solve the problem of JavaScript complexity with more JavaScript. That's why we have React and Angular and so forth. And I think that the the challenge shouldn't like the the true challenge is to scale vanilla like to actually figure out how to scale vanilla JavaScript on server side when you use server side as opposed to just using React because it solves your problems and you know it doesn't it doesn't solve all your problems they it doesn't so this is my tip to you have that rule of thumb if you are if you want the user to stay on the same page at all times or most of the time a dashboard a email client anything like that native field type of thing go with an SBA. Anything else, use server-side. Just do it. Trust me, it's going to save you a lot of time.